Hi friends, my name is Akil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial, I will show you how to generate files with unique names in SSIS. So recently I got a question from one of my subscriber, Sasek Kumar and he asked how to create a file name dynamically along with auto incremental sequence numbers in SSIS. So for example, we will create the files like one underscore maybe customer, two underscore customer, three underscore customer dot csv for all the files okay so let's see how we can do that using ssis so let's jump to the demo so i have a sql server table customer here in a sql server 2019 instance and this particular table contains 1000 records so what i will do i will export the data from this particular table into the csv files like one underscore customer two underscore customer something like this so for that what we need to do we need to have a kind of incremental number okay so that we can have the incremental number and that incremental number we can just append before the file name so for that what we can do we can actually create a sql table that can actually store the incremental number okay so what will happen when the package will run we will get the max incremental number from the sql server table and then we can append that particular value just before the csv file and then after the execution of the ssis package we can store the max value into the SQL Server table. So that's how the process can run. So that particular thing, we will create a SQL Server table here, TBL increment. And in this particular table, I will have only just one column, the ID column, okay? And the data type for the ID column is integer. So let me create a table here, TBL increment. So the table has been created. Now what will happen that when the SSIS package will run, we will get the max value from the TBL increment. So I can write a query here, select max ID from a TBL increment. So if I execute this query, so right now it is returning null because there is no data in the SQL server table. So to handle this particular thing, I can declare a variable here, declare cnt int, and then I can assign the value set at the rate cnt equal to from this particular query okay and now what i will do i will write another case like if cnt equal to and i will use is null function here so the if the value of the cnt will be null then we will replace it with one and then we will select the value of the cnt okay so let's see how it will return so yeah now this will return the value as one yeah so i think this seems good so i can actually copy this particular query from here okay now I can open the SSIS package so this is my blank SSIS package that I will use today and the first thing that I will do in this particular SSIS package is that I will create an SSIS variable maybe I can call it as ID and the data type for this particular variable will be in 32 so that is fine so I can just close this window and now I can just drag and drop the execute SQL task into the control flow window and I will call the execute SQL task as get max ID from SQL table. So that's what I will call it. And then I can configure this particular task. So from the connection, I will click on new connection and I will select the connection that will connect to the test database onto the SQL Server 2019 instance because my customer table exists in this particular database. Now I can click on OK. Now under the SQL statement, I can paste the query that I copied and I will click on OK because this will return a single value. So from the result set, I will select single row and then I can go to the result set, click add. In the result set name, I will put a value zero here. And because this is the only variable in the SSIS package, the ID, so that's why it is selected here. So I will click on OK. So we have configured the first task. Now we can just drag and drop the data flow task into the control flow window because data flow task can be used to export the data from the SQL server table to the csv file so i can configure the data flow task here because our source is a sql server table so we can use an oledb source here to fetch the data so i can just drag and drop the oledb source into the data flow task and then i can configure the oledb source here from the data access mode i will select the sql command and i can copy the sql query that will select the data from the table and i will paste the query here okay I can click on the columns to make sure that all input columns have been selected and I can click on OK. Now we want to write the data to a CSV file so we can just drag and drop the flat file destination into the data flow task. And then we can connect the OLEDB source with the flat file destination 
and then we can configure the flat file destination here to create a new flat file connection manager we can click on new the format of the flat file will be delimited so i will click on ok here and maybe i can name the connection manager as flat file now i can click browse to browse the file from here so what i will do i will create a file with the name one underscore customer dot csv so i can go to the this location d files location and maybe i can just give the initial name here one underscore customer dot csv okay and it will create automatically i have just given the initial value to this particular file so i can go back and i will select the csv files from here and then i can just select this option click open now i can click on column names in the first data row and if i go to the advanced so i can see all the columns here so all the columns seems good here i can click on ok if i click on the mapping so i can make sure that all input columns have been mapped with the destination columns and now i can click on ok so now what we need to do is that this connection manager flat file connection manager this is hard coded okay as of now it is pointing to the d files one underscore customer dot cs so we need to make this connection string as dynamic so as of now this value one this is hard coded and we need to get this value from the ssis variable id so whatever value id will get from the sql server table so we need to pass that particular value to the connection string so what i can do i can click on expressions and then i can click on these three dots from the property we need to set the connection string property and we can click on these three dots now what we need to do here we need to assign the value like d colon backward slash two times files so what happens in the expression language is that if we want to use the single backward slash then we need to write the backward slash two times so this is how it works and then after the files again we need to use two backward slash and here we need to give the file name so our file names will be one underscore customer dot csv and close the double quote if i click on evaluate expression so this is working fine now instead of this hard coded value we need to get the value from the ssis variable so what i will do i will put a double quote plus plus double quote and then between the two plus sign i can just drag and drop the id value from here now because the id variable is of type in 32 so i need to type cast it to string so what i can do i can type cast it here so i can provide this value dt underscore wstr comma 12 i can share this particular code with you so in case if you want to use it in your ssis package then you can use it if you click on evaluate expression so it got evaluated successfully and this was the default value zero which was assigned to the id variable so that's why you are seeing zero here but it will work fine now i can click on ok ok so we have made the connection manager dynamic you can see an fx sign just before the flat file it means that the connection is dynamic now i can go back to the control flow and after the export of the file we will insert a record into the sql server table so i can just drag and drop the execute sql task and then i can connect the data flow task with the execute sql task and i will call this task as insert the max id i think that should be fine now i can configure this one from the connection i will select the connection to the 2019 instance onto the test database and then i will write an insert query here insert into our table name and select whatever value will be like 0 plus 1 we will assign a value plus 1 to that particular id variable so i can copy this particular query from here and uh, i can go back to the expressions because whenever you need to use the variables inside the sql query you can write the query inside the expression i will select the sql statement source property from here and then i can put a double quote paste the query and the double quote now here instead of the zero you can put double quote plus plus double quote and then between the two plus sign i can just drag and drop the id variable here now because the variable is of type integer so i need to type cast it to a string so i can type cast it dt underscore wstr comma 12 and then i can click on evaluate expression so this works fine i will share this code as well with you so i can click on ok 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 so our ssis package is absolutely ready if i go to the d files location so as of now you can see a one underscore customer dot csv file which is empty right now 
and maybe I can delete this one as well it won't make any difference so let me just delete this particular file from here okay and let me set the delay validation property of the SSIS package to true okay so that's fine so that it won't you know validate the files and tables while running the package so now what I can do I can click on the start button and it should execute the SSIS package so I run the package and it should have created one file one underscore customer dot csv and it should have inserted 1000 records to that particular file so if i go to the d files location you can see a file here one underscore customer dot csv and this particular file should have data yeah, so it contains 1001 lines and the first line is the header information so that's why the actual number of records are the 1000 records and if i go to the this particular table TBL increment so maybe I can select the data from this particular table all right so let me select the data from this particular table and it should contain the value as 2 so you can see that the, we have the value as 2 and now as of now we have just one file at this particular location and if I re-execute the SSIS package so now this time it should generate a new file with the name 2 underscore customer dot CSV so you can see a file here one underscore customer two underscore customer and if I re-execute the SSIS package again then you should see a third file three underscore customer dot CSV so it is generating the files sequentially with a unique identifier value so I think this is what we wanted from the SSIS package yeah, so I think that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel Press the bell icon and click on also that you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much.